Hello, and welcome back to Belmont Bunch. Last time, well, not we spoke, I wasn't here, but last time them two spoke, the Islanders won zero games. After that, we won one game. So hopefully after this week, we'll win two. So thanks for tuning in, and let's get talking about the last three games, games three through five. Game three was our first home game at UBS Arena in playoff history. Tom, you want to talk about that a little bit? Oh, nice. I'm already in. Let's go. You're um, in. Man, uh, team, you know, down 2 0, coming off a really, like, just a one of those losses that you're never going to be okay about uh, in game two. Um, you know, we talked about the refereeing being a factor in the series. And it would continue to be in these three games. Um, in this first one against Carolina, uh, they got uh, the first goal in UBS history um, on a great play by Ryan Pollock, um, who has been fantastic in this series. Uh, he wins the puck at the blue line, uh, a backhanded pass. Nobody on Casey Sezikis. And he just gets to to rip one home. Um, I can't think of like a better, uh, like a, a more fitting player I think on this this Islander team to score the first goal in UBS uh, playoff history, uh, Sazik is such a hardworking player. Kind of like still, you know, the the I think, um, and I think pretty much everybody thinks the best player on that fourth line, the the most dynamic player on that fourth line. So extremely happy for him to have gotten the first goal. Uh, unfortunately, Jesper Foss scored shorthanded to cancel it out, and um, our power play just continues to be just horrendous to watch. Um, you know, well, we really... did get one power play call in this game. Yeah. So, we're getting there. We're getting uh, there. But... but it's like, it is completely, uh, it, it's like completely taken away by the fact that this is like the second game in a row we let a shorthanded goal, uh, you know, yeah. we scored. And this was a very slow developing one. I, I, I want to say it was Dobson uh, standing still in the point, loses it, and it turns into a two-on-one. Um, and Elia gets a big piece of the shot, but it still rolls in. Uh, Brock tried to save it off the line and couldn't. Um, and you know, it, it was a gut punch, uh, because the Islanders felt like, uh, you know, if we could just get, you know, the second goal and start to start to be able to play our game a little bit more. And, and, you know, it's, it's incredible at this point, our power play is so, so detrimental. I think we've given up as many goals on the PK or sorry, as many goals on our power play as we've scored, I think in the series. And that it's just like, you look at the series, it's three, two, there's been a lot of close games in the series. Uh, the difference in the series is special teams. The reason that the Canes are up, uh, they've taken advantage of, you know, maybe some fortunate calls from the refs, but like, you know, the Islanders PK, could make those penalties a moot point, but they're not. And and it's really unnerving uh, how bad the Islanders PK has been because the Hurricanes power play was not great in the regular season at all. It was not very good. And the Islanders are just giving up real good looks, even on the power plays where we're not giving up goals. So, um, man, I am very down on a 5-1 win, but it Actually, was not. Just what? to further your point even, even a little bit more, is uh, in the second period, I think it was the second period, uh, yeah, the Canes scored a goal that was then disallowed because it was offsides, and that was on the power play as well. So, right? Uh, Am I crazy? Yeah. It, it, it has been, uh, you know, we've had a Wait, few... Wait, was that this game or was that a different game? No, I think that was the, I think that was the most recent game, five, right? The, on their... That was uh, game five, I'm play. mixing yeah. it up. Where yeah. are you? I'm, I'm on game five. I'm too That's excited. Right. I want to talk about that game. Uh, <laughs> well, well, hey, we got to talk about the, the fastest four goals mm -hmm. in playoff history scored by, and Boston just tied it, um, mm. scored by uh, the, like, years, I saw a great tweet. It was like, um, you know, years from now, somebody going back and looking at the stat, like, who scored? The, oh, the Islanders. The 2022-23 Islanders. They must have had a great offense, <laughs> you know? And, uh it was, man, what a stretch. So, yes, as James alluded to, uh, the first goal on the power play. Um, 
it's funny. I, I was watching this game uh, in East Meadow with a bunch of my buddies, um, and I got hit with a wave. Uh, so this game's tied, and it's late because this goal came with about four minutes left. And uh, I got hit with a wave of, like, we're going to lose. I, I turned to my friend. I was like, I got a really bad feeling. This is like – because it I, – I mean, part of it is just, like, you know, we got swept by the Canes uh, in, in one of Barry Trotz's seasons. Uh, at the, To this point, we, we're 0-6 against them all time in the playoffs. And I'm just like, I, I – this team just, like – you know, there are just some teams that have your number. Uh, and we talked about that in the last episode that the Canes have had their number. And I just got this weird feeling like we're going to lose. And quite the opposite. Um, it starts with a power play goal. God help us, a power play goal. Um, and it's funny, the, the Islanders power play, um, it's the simplest plays that are scoring. It's not these great passing plays. Um, it was. It started off with a good cross-ice pass by Pajot um, from point to point. And Sebastian Ajo, um, to his credit, I, has not been very visible in this series. And like I say with defensemen, I can't, I'm okay with that. I, I think that means you're you're not doing anything especially bad. Uh, and Sebastian Ajo throws it to the net. Kyle Palmieri slapping his stick. He's calling for it. No one on him. The Canes completely let him go. But it was still even with all that time. Uh, and Sebastian Ajo did a great job of putting that puck in the air and giving – uh, Paul Mary a chance to tip it in still what a tip uh, I'm always yeah. amazed by it by how you know even on a play like that where he's able to see it the whole way and he doesn't have anybody on him it's still not an easy play um, but he makes it look easy Kyle Paul Mary he's looked really good in this series too um, I think he's been oozing confidence you see him doing like moves here and there which is not a thing you see out of the Islanders very often the Islanders are very much dump it and chase it team uh, Kyle Palmieri, unbelievable tip, 2-1 Islanders at that point. Um, seconds later, um, it was Kyle Palmieri, again, as the the, the key player on this, um, enters the zone, nice little move, little inside out, subtle pass out to the wing to Martin. Martin just gets it off his stick as quickly as possible, beats Ronta on the near post. Again, now Ronta couldn't do anything about the second goal and not really much about the first um, getting beat short side by Mount Martin, not something you're going to put on your resume. Uh, yeah. Scott Mayfield scores an empty netter after that. And then Anders Lee, for good measure, he really ne uh, needed this one. Uh, Sezikis got his second point of the game. Uh, a, a puck that Ryan Pollock, who gets another point, ke uh, keeps in at the line, uh, throws down low. Sezikis just throws it to the front of the net, and Anders Lee with one of his usual goals, one of his uh, you know tip-ins in front – Almost accidental. Uh, and 5-1 uh, win, cathartic. Unbelievably cathartic. Uh, the kind of win that even in a series that started off feeling cursed with the penalties and, you know, uh, an overtime loss, uh, all of a sudden you're like, wow, we hold serve at home. We got a real chance. Uh, and Carolina being a really bad road team, having lost, I think it was like eight straight road games after they, uh, eight straight playoff road games after uh the islanders win game three all of a sudden like you're you're you know i i don't know how did you guys feel going into to game four and was there anything in game three that you guys really wanted to to point out while i was going through it uh certainly why don't you go first i thought after game three ronta was gift gifting us a chance back in the series it's like okay sure the paul mary goal is a nice tip Sezika's goal, he probably wants that back, especially the Martin goal. Yeah. I think last night's game, the ESPN crew was lauding on Deronta. And I'm just like, you know, Sorokin has better stats than him. I don't know why they think he's some amazing goalie. But that was one of my takeaways from that. Um, I was feeling good, though, after game three. I thought... We were going to get that game for a win to tie the series up. Uh, so I was feeling optimistic. I thought our fourth line was back and better than ever, which is something we desperately needed out of them. And, yeah, I was just ready for that afternoon game coming up. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's the key word, I guess, is we were we thought we were ready, maybe, yeah. for that afternoon <laughs> game coming up. 
Um, yeah, I was feeling really good after this game. I mean, like I couldn't like I was just like, we got our mojo back, you know, and uh, f- like at least just at the very least building the players like confidence, you know, like like get building some mentum- momentum. Uh, mm. But yeah, I mean, like just ultimately the Canes responded in game yeah. four, as we will talk about right now. Yeah. I, something also I wanted to point out about uh, the last few minutes of game three to me. Um, like really, it, it, I, I saw some bad body language out of the Canes uh, the second they gave up the Palmieri goal. And, uh, you know, that game's not over. Uh, the Islanders have continually, you know, let teams back into into the game um, in the playoffs. You know, like, all it takes is a penalty on the Islanders and you're back in it. So, you know, I, I think Rob uh, Brindamore is, is a great coach and um, usually – his teams look like they're going to run through walls for him. But I was, I was a little surprised. I didn't think the Canes uh, had a good response in that last few minutes. Uh, it looked like they, you know, once the Paul Mary goal went in, they kind of just like, you know, they're like, all right, that that's the game. But you know what? Credit to them. They really did. They showed up in game four and the Islanders. Um, Actually, I, so- Islanders had all the momentum. Yeah, that is. Well, I, it was okay. I don't know. I've never actually seen this happen before. In the end of game three, they ended it with like two minutes and six seconds left on the clock. Um, because I mean, obviously, the Islanders are up by four, and uh, so they just um, called it. No, I think it was two yeah, seconds. No, like, no. Did I say yeah, two minutes? Two I meant two yeah. seconds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. man, I, think it, you know, it, I meant was, two seconds, like yeah. 2.6 seconds. That's what I meant. Sorry, this, yeah. this series has been really chippy, and I think there was some, some chippiness at the end, and um. There was like a whistle that went with two seconds left and they were like, let's just run it down. Let's not have, you know, a fight I know up. it wouldn't matter. I, yeah. Like obviously for the game, but like, is that like, what have they done that before? Just if they're worried if a fight's going to break out. Yeah. You know, I, I don't see it too often. Um, so it was also, I, it was the first game at UBS and the shortest game ever at UBS. Yeah. Like in terms the of ice fans time. paid for 60. Exactly. Minutes. <laughs> and they only got, yeah. 59 minutes 58 seconds mm-hmm. i would like all my money back <laughs> yeah. Correct. uh anyway, also, sorry. B- before moving on to game four just wanted to give a random shout out even though he's not watching maybe he is watching dave randorf who is doing the game on tnt uh he's usually a guy tnt doesn't use during the regular season he worked for sportsnet now he's the lightning regional announcer I thought he was amazing, like way better than Kenny Albert. And because I don't live on Long Island anymore, I have to watch the national feeds. And he was excellent, and I'm not really familiar with his work. So way to go, and I wish we had him for other games as well. All right, shout out. All right. I, I have been uh, pleasantly surprised. Uh, so I, I'm still on the island, so I've been watching with Brendan and Butch. Uh, but I've been like, Pleasantly surprised in watching the other playoff games. You know, we used to have Doc Emmerich, who was like the voice. Um, obviously, I think like like conference finals and on was Doc Emmerich. But I am like, I forgot how many really talented announcers we have. Um, and I've been I've been pleasantly surprised uh, with the announcing quality in the and oh i lost my charger uh the announcing quality in the playoffs i've been uh very impressed uh kenny albert um john forsland uh the guy that does the flyers games um uh, joe beninati i think has done games i i've uh, been really happy um with uh with the announcing i i think what? that's great i think if you're able to uh you know it, it's it's adding something to the game if you're able to hype it up a little bit. Uh, Brendan always does that. Um, he, I think even if we eventually lose Brendan to the national to what broadcast, uh, I'm 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 gonna like play the national. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna like use um, uh, what's it called? Uh, chat AI to you to <laughs> have Brendan call a game. Right. Chat. game one to the island <laughs> you know, it'd be well, they're, they're actually it is really creepy they do have uh i don't know how to use it but i know they have like voice generators so if there's enough like samples of people speaking yeah. online you could just make them say anything so it's yeah 
There's Dragon probably enough of Brendan. I also want one that's Butch, and it's just like yes. <laughs> one button for tour department, the other one for what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Uh, yeah, and okay. then so much. And then there'd be the meme where it's those two buttons, and then the third button that says Mark Barzell. <laughs> Mark Barzell that's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, we've we've prolonged it enough, but we mm-hmm. haven't talked about the game they lost. <laughs> yes, <laughs> really bad. And, um, so. Uh, they gave up another power play goal to start a game. This is a really, this was the peak. Um, like, I've almost never not wanted to watch my own team's playoff game. And like halfway through this game, the, the not even halfway, half, halfway through the first period, um, I, I just, I felt disgusted with uh, the refereeing and I wanted the game to end. And I didn't want to watch it. I did watch it the, the whole way through, but I really did. I was in an awful mood because of the refereeing in a hockey game. Uh, I was watching the game I uh, with my mom, and I, I feel like I was really short with her because I was so annoyed at the at the refereeing. So uh, we were we were at like a, a local bar that had the the game on, and you know West Macaulay's like. Oh, five minutes for fighting and this and that. And, uh, <laughs> and I was so angry, at, especially at the call that I, it, it's hard to say, you know, the Islanders looked flat for most of the game, but I was so disgusted with the, the call, the goalie interference call on Parise. He's very obviously shoved into the goalie. Um, I've always thought you should get an interference call for that. Mostly because I'm sure your goalie is not happy with you throwing a, a hockey player into him, you know, with knives on his feet. <laughs> I don't like that. I, my brother and I always joke, what is it? Why are you trying to kill your own goalie with another player? And and it's funny because now you're incentivized. Uh, they got the call wrong. May as well just throw this player into my goalie. Hope my goalie doesn't get hurt and get a two-minute power play, which we're definitely going to score on because the Islanders' PK is just abysmal right now. Seth Jarvis, um, a name that sounds like he's a butler, he scores the first goal. Um, Martin Nikas uh, of getting dumped into the bench and punching Brock Nelson fame. Uh, got another power play goal. Look at that. Two nothing. And um, the, oh, uh, going back to the penalties, um, the – getting the first call that wrong. And I think these refs quickly find out how wrong they were because they're seeing replays. Um, you know, I'm sure they're seeing stuff in the intermission. Uh, they might see it in the arena and they start going to make up calls. And the whole first period was a series of, all right, now we owe them this one. All right, now we owe them that one because the Islanders got a little bit of a phantom call in their favor after that. And then later on, uh, we had the Barzal uh, embellishment, which was a- another ridiculous, ridiculous call by the refs. Uh, I was sick to my stomach. So Nikas made it 2-0. Uh, that was on a 5-on-3, I believe. Um, Pellick, it was really weird. Adam Pellick was the one guarding the you know cross-crease pass. Um, but instead of guarding it, he was like baiting it. But he baited it and then didn't defend it, and they scored. So yeah. It mostly looked like he was just telling them, go there. Oh, shit, he scored. I, I <laughs> told him that. Uh, so Martin Nikas, uh, who I thought should, like, I was a little surprised he didn't get a fine for uh, punching a guy while on the bench. Um, but I wasn't belly aching about it. Like, yeah. Kings fans still find a way to. Um, Sebastian Ajo made it 3 nothing. Uh at this point, it was just depressing. Mid-second period, uh, pretty much the game over there. And it's funny because, you know, the Islanders just scored four in two minutes. But uh, I think it was pretty obvious. Um, in the first first period, I thought the Isles responded all right to the penalties. Except Matt Martin taking the penalty at the end of the period. How dumb was that? How stupid oh, is that? You know how tight the refereeing has been. And you know how bad it's been. And you're just going to go and, and check a guy way away from the puck, um, defending your teammate. But Sezikis is just going back to the bench. Sezikis knows what he's doing. You know, he got he got a, you know into it with the guy, and he was just like, all right, I'm going to the bench. Matt Martin takes a penalty, leads to the five-on-three, which gave the second goal to Carolina. And I feel like the Islanders just, from there, it was over. They just didn't show up. Um, 
it was really, it really, to me, felt like it was over at two nothing. Um, uh, funny. Uh, I happy that Pellick got a goal. You know, despite like what I just said about him, you know, kind of inviting a goal. I'm always happy to see Pellick score because he's so dedicated defensively for the most part. Um, that's nice to see him get rewarded offensively occasionally. Um, for a second there, it was so early into the third, uh, and they're down four one. Uh, it's early enough into the third that you're like. If they score again really quickly, they, they <laughs> actually, you know, I didn't let myself get all the way drawn in, thankfully, uh, which is good because they gave up a uh, goal to Mackenzie McEachern, which is a sign that you're going to lose. Uh, so that was 5 1. Bo Horvat scores shorthanded. Um, Bo Horvat. It's, uh, it's been a struggle. Mm. It does not look good. Uh, he is winning faceoffs, which is good. But uh, I hate for that for him to do a little bit yeah. more than that. Yeah, I think it was after game three he got interviewed and he's like, "Oh, I really like what I'm doing besides scoring." I'm like, "We're not paying you next year eight and a half to win faceoffs. We're just you have to score." That you, really yeah, he can't get away with being JG Pacho. Like, <laughs> right. Pacho, yeah. you know, <laughs> probably a guy that's probably making a little bit too much for the production he brings, but he makes up for it with like his exceptional defensive play and his, his line. Um, his, the third line to me is really good right now with him at free same fashion, but Horvat, um, you're, you're the one C and mm. you've got Barzi back. I, I know it's going to look, I'm not, I was I, I was tweeting while drinking, which is something you don't do. <laughs> and somebody somebody tweeted like, Anders Lee, you are an Arizona Coyote. And I, I was like buzzed and I was like, and Bo Horvat send tweet. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I don't – that was in the moment, very in the moment. Uh, I also sent out a tweet that Romanov just cost us the series and everybody – but I didn't say just cost. I, I said Romanov cost us the series. And that was my fault. Everybody was like – what the hell do you mean? It was our special teams. And I, yes, it was our. It, you're right. It was the special teams. Uh, that was just um, on the Aho goal. Romanov um, just missed. Uh, he tried to dump the puck in, just completely missed, and it turned into a two on one the other way. Um, what I meant there was just like that was the nail in the coffin. Right. I felt for the series at that point. Um, so Romanov uh, has only played two games, so obviously it's not his fault and uh, has looked fine. Uh, so, yeah. you know, definitely better than Bull Duke. Uh, happy to have Romanov back. Um, so, yeah, uh, unfortunate for him there. Uh, but in his defense, uh, we stunk anyway. Yeah. Um, so, 5 2, the final. Little surprised. Uh, and I think, I think Sterling, you might have pointed this out on Twitter. Um, that game, once McEachern scores, uh, let's, how much time was left? They still they had six minutes left. I'm a little surprised they don't pro, uh, put Varley in there. Just give yeah. Smoke in a game's over. It's five one. Got like six minutes left. G give Varley a few shots. Uh, and and like small thing going into game uh, five. Um, I kind of wanted to see Simon Holmstrom. Uh, I was anticipating us losing game five, and in my head I was just like, I'd like to see. Uh, Holmstrom get a playoff game under his belt. Let's see how he does with it. Um, but the Islanders went with the same lineup uh, in, in game five, and it paid dividends. Um, I only got to watch the first period and a little bit of the second, uh, and then I got to watch highlights from there. I had a work thing, uh, but what I watched in the first period – was the Islanders getting just getting by, you know, Sorokin making some saves. We got a few posts in our favor. Uh, we got a very, very big goal from Pierre Engvall, another one that right under Ranta. Yeah. Monty Ranta, just, he's just not – I don't think you, you can win a cup with him. But I don't want to talk too much about him because the series isn't over yet. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's funny. I talked about after game two that if I were uh, Brenda Moore, I would actually go to Frederick Anderson or uh, Kochekov 
Yeah. Um, because I felt like Auntie Ronta was keeping us in the series. And Ronta has played better since then, but the goal, some of the goals he's giving up are still like that in the playoffs, you need to make that save. Uh, that the Pierre Engvall goal, I know it's a one on one, but the shot never left the ice and you let it. Yeah. Um, that was interesting too. This, the Canes have not very much impressed me. Uh, they've taken advantage of, you know, their power plays that they've gotten, but, um, that was a very, very light forecheck by uh, Pierre Engvall and uh, Brock Nelson. I, I think it was Brock Nelson. Um, yeah, Nelson. And all it took was them being there, and the Canes were like, here, take the puck. And uh, Brock Nelson, all right, was, or was it Paul? It was Brock. Brock throws it to the front, and Engvall puts it through the pads. Um, yeah. I don't, it, it's weird. I'm like the quality of goals that I've seen in this series. Uh, I'm used to in the playoffs seeing the goalies make all the saves they should, and then some of the ones they shouldn't. Uh, and not really seeing that at Aranta. I feel like he's giving up goals he shouldn't. He makes one or two saves that you're like, oh, that's a pretty nice save. But by no means am I impressed by Nazi Ranta at all. Oh, Bobrovsky just stopped a, a shot, a breakaway of the buzzer. Sorry. Wait, wait. Bobrovsky's playing tonight? Yeah, he started tonight. Oh my god. I was gonna ask you about that once we uh talk about the game uh the, the rest of the series yeah. going on. But anyway, uh Engvall got that one. Uh I saw the Nelson goal. Do you guys want to take it from there and talk a little bit about game five? Um yeah, I mean I, I just like rewatched the highlights like to to finish taking notes and like fresh my memory. Yeah, that Nelson goal was Brutal for Sebastian Ajo of the Carolina Hurricanes yeah. because, uh, yeah, so Angval just shot it towards the net. It hit uh, Ajo right in the face, like right on the lip. And, yeah, so he immediately went down. And as the puck is falling, Nelson just taps it like midair uh, yeah. right behind um, Auntie Ranta. And so it's unfortunate for Sebastian Ajo. And it was just like Brock Nelson didn't skip a beat. He was like, I don't, like – I'm sorry that it hit you in the face, but man, he like <laughs> Not even, he tracked the puck the whole way, and he didn't yeah. even look. He didn't even <laughs> look. At Ajo. Well, because it's so funny, you know, like the Islanders are so, you know, I, I they do not like the Canes, and the Canes do not like us. Mm -hmm. And I, I have a feeling Brock felt nothing for Sebastian <laughs> on that play. And I do want to point out one thing, um, and then I'll let you guys carry the rest of the game since this is kind of the last that I got to watch, but. Um, go back to that goal, uh, that Nelson goal, and watch uh, the silky move by yeah. uh, Kyle Palmieri. Um, he's um, looking like you know he might cut it back. He's he's towards the uh, the goal line uh, in the far corner. Sorry, in the near corner of the broadcast, um, and you know looks like he's going to pass, and then goes through his own legs and makes the defenseman you know respect the pass and has his stick in the lane. And with that little move, uh, is able to shimmy around, get behind the net, and create that play uh, that turned into Pierre Engvall getting it not on net, off <laughs> off face. Um, so that line to me, uh, I'm very obviously the best line the Islanders have had in the playoffs. That that second line looks real good, and I'm really excited to to see Pierre Engvall come back next year because that line is getting work done, and. I don't know if I've seen Kyle Palmieri this comfortable as an Islander, but yeah, no, I, they, that line just looks like they, they mesh real well. Yeah. I mean, it's the classic thing, right? He grows his beard back. He's more comfortable. And just let him, just let him have it. The hey, whole year. I, he should get not a religious exemption, mm, a performance exemption. Mm, mm, he is much better when you've let him start yeah. growing. Well, but, when um, Lou isn't the GM next year, then he, he can grow it out, you know? Yeah, Chris Lamorello, step on up. <laughs> uh, but uh, so two things I want to mention also quickly is, uh, so it was, I think, yeah, it was in the first. This is what I accidentally alluded to in the wrong game. So that's, so in the first, the Canes had almost tied it. They were offsides on a uh, goal. I don't think it was a power play. No, it was a power play. Yeah. So uh, yeah, they were on the hands were on a power play. You know, scored a goal that ended up being disallowed for being offside, and that obviously huge, like you know, whatever, like a 
not win, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, no, definitely huge. I mean, well, like it's it's like a not a win. I mean, it is a win, but it's it, it's absolutely. it's like a huge. I don't know. I'm missing it's, the word. Well, here. it's almost like scoring a <laughs> goal momentum. Like, shift. Yeah, yeah, it would have been a huge momentum shift, obviously, if they got that goal. Yeah, but um, and then, but I think interestingly, the momentum shift after we got after the Islanders got the second goal, I think like I saw the, the Canes were playing so much harder. Like yeah. immediately, like playing faster, forechecking harder, everything. And I don't think the, I think the Islanders, I, I don't know. I think they just were able to hold down the fort well enough after that, more so than build off their own momentum. It was kind of like, it wasn't like the Islanders scored that second goal. They built up momentum. They just, I think, got comf- uh, comfortable in a good way. Like we're able to hold down the uh, the ensuing momentum from the Canes. I thought. We completely stole that game. Like, the first period was the worst hockey I've seen in a long time from the Islanders. Just, Chom put it very nicely. Like, we were just getting by. I thought we were getting obliterated, and it was all thanks to Sorokin for it being scoreless. That power play, the disallowed goal, we were just getting embarrassed on that, our penalty killers. Like, Mm -hmm. The guy was wide open back door. Fortunately, the second period, we started to get things going. But again, like I wasn't really impressed by us. Most of our shots were pretty low danger. And that continued throughout the rest of the game. Obviously, we haven't talked about the Barzell goal. Aside from that, we weren't really getting prime scoring chances. And the Canes had two posts, I think, hit. Uh, right in, in the in the second or the second and the third, I don't know, but um, yeah. So like they had some pretty good chances. So I mean, we got the win. It was on the road, so it was an elimination game. I don't really care that much how they played as long as they get it together. Uh, but I guess I can continue breaking down the events of the game with uh, second periods going by after our two nothing goal and. I believe the Canes' first goal was a shot from the point that was redirected um, backdoor. And I don't know, that's a tough one. I feel like they're scoring on that a lot this series. It's something a few weeks ago in the regular season, I think, where we were talking about the defensemen needing to box out their guys a bit more. But as for Sorokin, I was actually getting pretty frustrated with him. Uh, You know, he is, I think, maybe the best goalie in the league. Allmark is up there, of course, too. And he got us to the playoffs. But I thought aside from officiating game two, he let in a few bad ones, especially the tying goal. People were saying, oh, you know, he picked the corner or whatever. But I'm just looking at the replay, and Sorokin just went down for no reason, left the whole top half of the net open. And then game four, he let in five goals, although none of them weren't great. But I do think he had a very good game five. Um, That goal, what are you going to do about that? Just a nice deflection. So there was the 2-1 goal. Yeah. And the second goal from uh, from Ajo. Um, Yeah. Also impressive that Ajo came back after getting ripped in the face. Um, That was another one. uh, Not... Not, a, I don't want to say another one because it wasn't like you pointed out. The disallowed goal um, was we've given that one up a bunch of times in the series. We just talked about the five on three, um, where obviously there's going to be more space on the ice on a five on three, but they are giving up the like who's getting the back post? Like yeah. a, a lot of times, it, it looks like guys don't know who's responsible for the guy in the back post, and it's been killing them. There have been a bunch of goals in the series that they've given up that have been back post, cross ice pass, and like shouldn't get through. And there should be somebody on that guy. And uh, yeah, so that's that's pretty worrying. The Aho goal, um, the Islanders just gave up a pass right to the middle of the slot. Um, I, well, I'll, I'll save it for hot or not, which we'll talk about in a second. But uh, there, there have been some guys in the blue line that I, I really need to see. More, I'm really talking about one guy in particular. Well, <laughs> but I, I probably everyone knows, but um, yeah, the Islanders, uh, the the challenge. I wanted to go back to the challenge. So the offside, uh, it was the right call. 
it was funny uh, because I didn't see that. Like I'm, I was watching the game. I just didn't see the guy that you know on the far side went offside um, in in live action or live action. It's all live action. It's not <laughs> anime um, in, in real time. Uh, and it was funny when because um, ESPN didn't like you know sometimes the broadcast sees it and they're like oh take a look at this even before we've challenged. But on this one there was no replay or anything and um, you just see like. Yeah, New York Islanders are challenging for all side. And I was joking with my friends, like, um, that was one of those where, because we were, it was our first, first period playoff goal in 10 games. We were joking, like, this, oh, you know, the Islanders had 24 straight games in the playoffs of not leading after the first. <laughs> and we're up one nothing, and we're like, and we give up a penalty, and we're like, here it comes. Here it comes. The streak continues. Um, and the challenge um now I, I think when you challenge you have to say hey we're challenging for goaltender interference yeah. yeah. we're offside you can't just be like my first thought was the yeah. lane was so flustered that he was just like we're challenging and they're like for what and he's like i don't know find something <laughs> uh but good you know what good on lane we've had a good video coach um ever since trots got here and uh i feel like when the islanders challenge they do well and uh the islanders challenge here and it was gigantic uh, I think the the confidence would have taken a huge nosedive if they don't come out of that first period leading. Um, so yeah, big the video coach might have turned the series. How often do you say that? But um, yeah. yeah, we did kind of just hold on. We got outshot thirty six to twenty two. Um, but we've seen a lot of the games like that for the Islanders in the regular season. If the Islanders can get ahead, they can afford to absorb some pressure. Maybe not 36 shots, um, <laughs> but they can afford to absorb some because they know that Sorokin is is capable of stealing a lot. And, uh, you know, this series, uh, Sorokin has played well. Not, like, unbelievable, but he's played well. Uh, I think the defense and the penalty killing has not helped Ilya at all. Um, but generally, I think he's been pretty good. He did make a big, big stop in this game Uh I want to say it was like two nothing, and there was a cross crease pass, and Ilya got across and got like his arm on it. Huge save. Um, it's funny because I mean sometimes you see like the ridiculous like stick your stick out saves from Ilya, but sometimes he makes big saves look really easy, and then you forget that how how good a save it was. And I thought of that on that one, um, but yeah. So the Islanders um, still alive. And as Sterling pointed out, winning an elimination game on the road, that's good. That's really impressive. Um, I know it wasn't, like, super pretty, um, but they got it done, and I'll give them credit. Um, really, really curious to see now what they bring back to UBS. Uh, they talked about how much crowd noise helped them in game three, and then the Islanders betrayed us in game four. <laughs> well, the refereeing didn't help, but uh, the Islanders – let that get to them. Uh, and so I'm very, I'm curious to see um, how they respond now. Um, do they know they might've gotten away with one a little bit, you know, just, just got by the skin of their teeth. I was so happy to see Barzy score though. Barzy playoff goals give me life. Like that added a year back onto my life. I'm going to look 28 now. Mm. <laughs> he uh, wanted you could tell he wanted to dish that to Bo so bad. So, but I'm so thankful he took the shot. Yeah, I like the way Bo's been going. It, it, I'm sure it was tempting to be like, here, this could be, you know, empty netter basically. <laughs> but I am very happy uh, that Barzi shot that because, um, you know, uh, I think he's played pretty well for a guy that had a fairly significant lower body injury, um, just made it back to the playoffs and really only took like one game to kind of get back to speed. I don't think he's a hundred percent still, but I really admire, um, you know, the, how quickly he's been able to get back to at least looking, you know, a certain percentage of, of what he usually looks like. I don't know, maybe 50, yeah. but, uh, he still looks good. So I'll give him that. Um, Hopefully he can help ignite Bo because Bo needs help. And uh, Bo technically really dominant. Bo. 
Bo technically got an assist on that by creating the turnover. So hopefully he realizes that. Yeah. So yeah, we definitely need more out of Bo. Um, this could give us a good chance. Right before we talk about uh, hot or not, you know, oh, you got you got to be you got to be a championship level player, and uh, I am. I'm a championship level player. Because I won my fantasy. What? Is that the Stanley <laughs> Cup? Oh, my. Tom, who? how did you get that? <laughs> That's amazing. I wow. did it by I winning didn't know you fantasy were... league. And I just wow. want everyone to know, uh, if you're an Isles guy, if you're an Isles guy fanatic who just pays attention to the Isles guys, it's kind of creepy. Um, <laughs> I'm better than you. <laughs> my, um, yeah. Um, we're, I'm Tom better is than better you. than you in a, in a fantasy you know, league that you didn't play in. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you're an Isles guy, then you lost to me. That's true. So it's pretty tough. Uh, I have been known in that league as a very mild mannered guy. Everybody else shit talks. My ego is going through the roof. <laughs> it's over. It's over. Uh, wow, so this is already the beginning of the end. Like you're recognizing you're like the mild manneredness <laughs> got you this far. It got you to, you know, it helped you win. And now mm. you're just like, fuck it. It's worth it. <laughs> it's worth being an asshole because I won. <laughs> well, you know what? You got to take advantage of getting to be a dick until the next season starts. Mm. Um, so I plan on bringing this to parties. Um, <laughs> to Islander weddings, games. <laughs> bat mitzvahs, even though I'm not Jewish. And <laughs> anyone that, it's like, it'll be like wedding crashers, but for bat mitzvahs. Mm-hmm. Uh, movie yeah, people will be like, "Wait, uh, how are you related to the family?" And you'd be like, "I I won the uh, the cup in our family NHL fantasy uh, league." <laughs> right, right. What does that mean? <laughs> yeah. Um. So, uh, yes, big moment for me. Yeah, I, big moment. I, you for, know what's funny too for the, I, the country, if I actually say so yeah. much. So. <laughs> Um, uh, you know, because I, I this probably will propel me to run for president once I turn thirty five. <laughs> Um, but yeah, um, big moment for me. And I'd like to give a shout out to the only reason I won David Posternock <laughs> um, for putting up 80 fantasy points in my two playoff rounds. Uh, David Posternock scored 10 goals and six assists in my playoffs. Wow. That's insane. Legitimately unbelievable. Um, and I'd like to not thank, um, Andre Vasilevsky for uh, putting up 0. 0.2 points in my championship, <laughs> contributing pretty much nothing. Uh, in the semifinal, he made 99 saves on 100 shots in three games. And then in the finals, he gave up nine goals on like 50 <laughs> shots. And uh, so I'd like to not thank him, but I'd like to thank <laughs> Philip Gustafson for making up for it and being the greatest waiver claim that's ever existed since Matt Molson. <laughs> um, okay. So that was a good little interlude. Uh, hopefully I bought you enough time to <laughs> give the hot and not players of the playoff series so far. Who wants to go? Yeah. I, I have one off the bat. Okay. Uh, I'm Another one's percolating. But, and this yeah. is this is because of recency bias, as Sterling likes to point out, because uh, yeah. it's very true, um, is uh, Angval, for sure. I okay. think, like, I mean, he had a goal and an assist in game five. Uh, and that's really all it takes. You know, I'm like, he's showing his medal in the playoffs. Mm. Okay. And I, I, I seriously think he's only going to continue to um, make more chances and, like, actually uh, maybe have a more consistent finishing touch or something like that, you know, as he plays more with the team, you know, especially in playoff hockey. So mm. it's just great to see him succeed. So he's my hot all right. Yes. Am I not? Is Scott Mayfield okay. getting hit in the face in game two? Okay. What an idiot. <laughs> no. Uh, Scott Mayfield, actually, I've been very, very happy with. Um, uh, I'll have, you have to come back to me for that. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, maybe we'll stick with hot for now. Uh, mm-hmm. Sterling, hot player. Okay. I just want to mention about Angval. I think we totally should bring him back next mm-hmm. year, no matter what, unless we give him a stupid Lou contract. <laughs> but he's making he's making Nelson and Palmieri look very good. I mean, they're good too. But yeah, uh, yeah I would love to bring him back. Uh, I'll just go with one guy for now, unless we loop again. Um, 
someone I think who's looked fantastic is Ryan Pollock. Mm. I mean, when's the last time I could have said that? Maybe like three years ago or something when he scored 10 goals. He is skating with the puck, which is unbelievable. Like I've never seen before. Prime Bobby or out there. And he's going to get a goal in game six. He will. Wow. Okay. Right. Yeah, I would I would agree. Um, so th- it's good because I had two players in mind and uh Pollock was one of them. Now that you've given him his props, and I think it's a hundred percent due. Um, I think in that game one, which was a complete snoozer, he was the energy. He came out even even if he didn't score the goal, I was impressed with how physical he was. Ryan Pollock came out and wanted blood in game one and got to score on top of it. Um, So, yeah, Ryan Pollock, for me, has been our best defender in the series um, and has really, really impressed me. And I I really want to see him try to capture this and and bring it back to the regular season next year because I I didn't feel like I saw this aggression. I know it's hard to sustain for 82 games, but I was very impressed. Uh, I have been very impressed with Ryan Pollock's series. Um, so I'm glad that, that you gave him his due there. So I like both of your picks so far. Uh, and it's good because I have a, th- I have a different player. So we're, you know, we have multiple guys. I'm going to go with Kyle Palmieri, uh, who is tied for the lead in points for us. Uh, and to me, you know, I talked about that move that led to the, the face goal, um, in, in game five. Um, he, to me has just looked really confident. Um, he was calling for that um, that shot pass from uh, uh, Ajo to win game three and, uh, you know, set up Matt Martin seconds later on a nice little move. He looks really nimble right now, skating really well, um, putting pucks on net, um, you know, not always the prettiest goals, but he threw one on that on back on his backhand in game two that got a, our offense going in that game. Um, yeah, I, I've been very impressed to me. He looks the best he's looked as an Islander. Um, and I'm, yeah, I, it, I, I don't think it's a coincidence. Um, you know, we picked two thirds of that line for our hot, that line is real good. Uh, and it's the majority of our scoring right now. All right. Enough of positivity. Yeah. Who, who wants that? Negativity. Uh, who wants to start off the knots? James, you want to start because you started hot? No, I don't want to start. <laughs> I, I could start. All right, go for it. Um, no Dobson. Um, continues to just be a horrible hindrance to the power play, which is impressive because everyone's been bad on the power play. But Dobson stood out as especially bad. Um, he... I, I, it's just too easy to knock off the puck. Um, you know, his first couple of years, last year, I thought he skated real well. And I was impressed because we we know he's got the skating ability, but I think he, he lacked confidence in his first two seasons in the NHL. And um, this year I was really, or sorry, last year, very impressed by how he blossomed. And for the beginning of this year, was pretty impressed when he was our whole power play was our power play plan was drop it back to Dobby. He shoots it, it hits off somebody and it goes in. Um, but I'm really worried because I, I don't know if there's a facet to his game. That's all that impressive, you know, offensively, it feels like it's more just like he just puts a lot of pucks on that. Maybe is he, is he just getting lucky? Um, and you know, he got to quarterback the power play um, and, and hit, I just haven't I, – I feel like he's regressed in confidence. Um, defensively, uh, I think he's too easy to strip um, because he just isn't a big guy, doesn't use – he's he's a tall guy, but he's a string bean. Um, he scares me when I see pictures of him coming off the bus in a suit, and it's just like I, – I imagine, you know, Doug Dimmodome in his hat? I imagine that, but it's no Dobson's legs. He's, he looks like Jack Skellington. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is not body shaming. This is yeah. just like. <laughs> this I is just making fun of his body. Yeah. I'm not shaming it. Just making fun of it. Very different. Okay. Anyway, just moving on. <laughs> of his body for, for things that he can't. 
much control. I mean, it's one of those things that the Florida Panthers have won in overtime. The series keeps going. And and who is it? It's Kachuk. Yeah. And uh, that's going to be on Steve Dangles. Dang it's because Linus Hallmark tried to play the puck through to the corner and it got stolen. Wow. Matthew Kachuk is just an absolute freaking beast. Um, Wow. Good for the Panthers. Still no series. As we're filming this, no series is over. And um, I think, uh, was that the, that the, the other series can't end tonight. So nobody's done yet. That's cool. Um, all right. We're uh, Dobson. Uh, I think it's legitimately time for Sebastian Ajo to be the first power play guy. Or you know what? To Sterling's point about, you know, Pollock a few years ago, maybe it's time for Ryan Pollock to quarterback that power play. Um, he's got a cannon. Uh, he's skating well right now. I wouldn't mind it. Seeing Pollock in the power play. Anywho, um, your guy's nuts. James, I bought you time. Well, I mean, you've convinced me. It's no Dobson. All right, he sucks. <laughs> we should just fire him. No, uh, it is, it is fresh. I don't blame him for the power play, but... Yeah, it is hard to ignore that. Yeah, it's definitely not all on him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's also like he's, I don't even know, how, how old is he? Like 20? Man. He's 20, um, oh, he's 23. I would, I, he's I think he's I 22, 23. He's 23, according to NHL.com. He's 6'4 and 194 pounds, which is, which is pretty light. Um, oh, my God. I know. He's <laughs> <Skellington>. <laughs> He's 6'4. Uh, I'm, I'm five. Well, 6'4 like, on skates, so, you know. I don't know if that's on. Is it on? I don't. Think I just really. always say that. I don't know. Because <laughs> I refuse to I, believe that like JG Peugeot is like five ten. You know. Which is, <laughs> you know. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna start telling women that I'm one eighty eight on skates, and they'll be like, "Uh huh." How does that affect your weight? <laughs> <laughs> well, the skates are heavy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wear twenty pound skates with uh, bricks in them. <laughs> so yeah. Co- so JG Pedro is five eleven, and I mean it's just like, and that's our short king, and he's still exactly he's still well long. above average height. He's almost six feet tall. Like how is he our short king? So I just don't believe the heights. I just always that's, say that that's hockey skates. standard. Um. Yeah. Right. But uh, yeah. No. I mean it. It is hard to say because. Uh, it's I don't want to blame the defense, but it it does feel like we're they're secure in knowing how good Sorokin is. So uh so yeah, I, I would just go just basically I'll piggyback off what you said with Noah Dobson because um we really do need the power play, especially to step up, but also the defense in general. Um and Tom has muted himself for some reason. So Sterling, Sorry, I, I was no, I was, no, no apology. I necessary. thought I was going to sneeze. Sterling, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So I I've been frustrated with Jobson, but I'm going to cut him a little slack here with my pick. Maybe I'm bending the rules a little bit. We'll see. We're very go... very strict on these rules, so be yes, careful. Of okay. Of <laughs> my not pick is going to be for special teams coaches. And ah. yes, yeah, so that was clever, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, this is not, not the video recent. coach. Video yeah. coach is hot. Not the video coach. <laughs> I've yeah, never seen it. He's hot, though. Yeah. Yes. Um, this is not recency bias. Like I've, I've seen brutal special teams in the 2010s and whatnot, especially early 2010s. But this is the worst I've ever seen. Both power play and penalty kill. Our power play scheme is just ridiculous. Every play has to start with a dumb draw pass that's completely meaningless, almost led to a goal against last game. Yep, and that was Dobby, I think. That was Dobson. And then also Barzell had a weird attempt to strip the puck instead of just playing defense, but whatever. So we start with a kind of meaningless draw pass. Then our zone entries are either dump and chase, which may be our best option at this point. Uh, Barzell, who gets the blue line, then just stops at the top of the circle. Everyone Mm. freezes. They're all Josh Bailey out there, which (laughs) makes no sense because we have some good skaters. I don't know why people refuse to move. Or if Nelson carries the puck, 
he barely gets the blue line and then throws it across to the boards. And it's just not working. Everyone's standing still. We've seen some great power plays with this group. You look at the personnel, we should not be the worst power play in the playoffs. We shouldn't be 30th in the league. Everyone's standing still. No pucks on net. Our power play sucks. Our penalty kill, we're getting so embarrassed out there. Just so embarrassed. The, the guy, we mentioned this 50 times already, but someone's wide open on the back door, every power play for Carolina. And just, if we keep playing like this, even if we win the cup, just by playing like this, I don't want to see those guys back. And I don't know who's in control of that, if that's a lane thing or if that's a Lou thing, but I really think we'd be up in the series if, we had the same special teams coaches as even last year. I have good news for you. We are not winning the cup. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, the um, just so you know, if we even make it to like the second round, I'm just going to clip that, you know, and like just, oh, yeah. just well, like well, over and over again, plastic it all over. Okay. I, everywhere. I, I do like we can win the series. I something in this series that's really surprised me, and I really. I really thought um, Carolina was better than this, and they're just, they are injured though. Yeah, that's true. They're missing. Uh, they had Teravine for like a game and a half, and um, they don't have um, who was it? The Svechnikov. Um, but they're not really. I don't know. They're at five on five, they're not very dangerous. Uh, they're faster than us. Um, and you know, in, in game one, like we could not pin them down. We couldn't get our game going where we forecheck because they were like, we were dumping in and they're too quick to get it out of the zone. Um, but they don't strike me as especially tough. They don't strike me as, uh, very good offensively, uh, defensively. They're pretty good. Goaltending is just all right. Um, I personally, and this could come back to bite me. I think whoever wins the devil's Rangers series is going to run over Carolina. If it's Carolina in round two, um, because like Carolina now Carolina had the top penalty kill in the regular season, but it's funny because it's almost like how much are we even seeing of that? Cause the, the Islanders power play is legitimately so bad. I think any pen, penalty kill in the league would be doing this yeah. to the Islanders. And like you said, the Islanders power play, there's no strategy outside of dump and chase. And if that, like, and e even that's barely working because, I mean, you shouldn't have to dump and chase in the power, but you're a man up. You should be able to enter the zone. But the only guy that has the skating ability, there's like two guys that I think have the skating ability to enter the zone on the power play. And I, I, I think it's Barzi and it's Angval. Um, and it's, it's really tough to watch the, like I, I get, anxious every time I see any form of drop pass and the Dobson play, you know, it was part of that. Um, the, the power play, it, it's, you got to scrap it completely, right? Like yeah. mid series. Uh, Cause it, it doesn't seem like they're trying much different and they're just butting their head against the wall. Um, and it's just really bad. So it's, it's inexcusably bad because it's not even getting pucks on net. You're not even getting set up. You're a man up. Now, I, I, I think the 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 fact that, you know, the – I don't think we move the puck fast enough on the power play. It slows to a crawl, and then we don't shoot, and then a pass gets deflected, and the power play's over. Um, the Canes have an aggressive power play, and the Islanders have no answer. I'm sorry, the Canes have an aggressive penalty kill uh, where they're getting on our guys – and there's just no answer. We don't move the puck quickly enough. Uh, the guys like get pressure. Um, the pass isn't good. And and a lot of times, even when we do get the pass past that first penalty killer, it's you know we just had to throw it in deep, and now it's a board battle. And it's like we're a man up. We shouldn't have to be in these board. Like we should be you know able to pick out. Hey, if one guy's pressuring, there's a guy open. You know, there should be a guy open at any point because we're on the power play. So, yeah, um, strategy-wise, it's really bad. I actually personally think the personnel is not 
very good either. I know we had a, a, a capable penalty kill, I'm sorry, power play last year. Um, but we also sucked at five on five. So maybe we can't be good at both at the same time. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm having a really rough time. This power play is like, shut your eyes. It's that bad. Like for two minutes, just close your eyes. Um, I might try that in game six. <laughs> Carolina is stacking three guys on their blue line. And I have the fourth guy in the center ice. You're, you're dropping it back to Barzell. And then all four other Islanders are standing past center ice before the blue line. And your strategy is, okay, Barzell, go skate through everyone and find some opening. And I don't know why we can't like make a couple nice passes or something. Why there's no reinforcements in case Barzell messes up. It's just it's such a dumb setup and it's costing us. We have one power play goal all series. Whoops. We have one shorthanded goal. So yeah, when we were down like kill... five, one. Yeah, our penalty kill has been as effective offensively. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. Um, man, that is that is tough. It's real tough. Not a good look. Um, yeah, if we lose the series, I think you know you can look at that and be like, well, it's not a mystery. That's what happened. Um, all right. Do we want to talk about the bracket, or do you want ah, to? Give yes. It? Do you want to quickly give a percent chance that the Jets? That, sorry, I'm the Jets. The Jets. Oh. <laughs> sorry, they just had um, Aaron Rodgers on my TV in the background. You mean our quarterback? Is that what my you meant to say, Tom? The guy, <laughs> the guy that I didn't really want. Uh, but wow. now I'm, I, you know what? It's a hostage situation. I have to <laughs> like him now because it's our only hope. Um, okay, meant to say. I uh, what what chances are are you giving the Islanders to win the series? Uh I would be personally um I'm giving them probably less than 50% chance to force game 7 but then like a less than 10% chance to win a game 7. Like uh that's that I don't know, that's just off the off the top of my head gut feeling. So okay. a, a little little less than a coin flip to force game seven, but ultimately I, I'd be very surprised if they even performed kind of well in the mm-hmm. game seven. Because I feel like a lot of times, unless something crazy happens, uh you know, like the better team just is just, you know, in this case Carolina, uh just kind of shuts will be able to shut them down if it gets that late in the series. But I don't know. Then that yeah. counter argument would be that the Islanders would be able, you know, the the grind would finally like set in on Carolina, and uh, you know, so it, it's not impossible. I just so I guess cumulatively, what is that like a a low chance? Low chance. <laughs> yeah, I get what you're oh, I benched a pitcher in fantasy tonight. Sorry, I was listening to everything you said. <laughs> um, I, I benched the pitcher that beat the Mets tonight, and I'm mm-hmm. done. Um. Yeah, I, I'm curious that it's, I don't know, like I'm used to being the pessimist. Um, and, and it's funny because I don't like, I'm not impressed by our play, but this team, some credit you have to give him, uh, the, the team is just like, they, they, they win ugly. They'll find, they might win the series. Oh, hi cat. You want, do you want to be on? You know what I just realized while Tom's talking to his cat is that Sterling, you bummed me out, man. I was like, because <laughs> I, because I was thinking about Game Five, and I was like, you know, yeah, it wasn't the prettiest, but we won. Mm-hmm. And you were like, that was the worst hockey you've ever seen in my life. We completely stole that game. And I'm like, damn, he's right. And so, and like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that's the worst hockey. I think the worst hockey I'd ever seen in my life was. Us against who's the team that we could have clinched against and we blew it towards the end of the regular season. Oh, Washington. This season. No, actually, the Washington. two worst games I probably saw almost ever were the Buffalo and Columbus games that we played. Uh, More so the really, Buffalo. Yeah, the the Nickelodeon night Buffalo game specifically. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. That was bad. Nickelodeon night was betrayed. Yeah. Okay, James, you're editing, so you'll see this, but. I don't know if I said the worst game ever, mm, but in a long doesn't matter because that's how I that's that was the response you 
got for me. Okay, so, fair yeah. enough. Fair <laughs> enough. It's uh, not my responsibility. <laughs> yeah. There are two cats. <laughs> Jasper, come on, Jasper, come on. Jasper, be in this episode. But I was feeling more confident when we started recording, and now I'm like, you guys are really feeling... But I'm oh, also... Well, I'm gonna, I don't have I'm as keen an here. eye as you guys. Well, I was I was working on the positive outlook, which is that even when... Like, we find Carolina is not amazing. Like, we can win... You, you take it one game at a time. Carolina's not good on the road, so you've got a shot in game six. And then... I know game seven's on the road, but Carolina lost the game seven at home last year. Just what are you doing? He's going through my garbage. Um, Carolina right, lost well, the game let's, seven. Let's let Sterling talk <laughs> while you fix this cat or whatever. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if he Got didn't it. have a cat and he's just uh, yelling at nothing? Just that would be funny, but fortunately he has a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Jasper. Hello. <laughs> nice to meet you. Oh, we have to do one of those videos now where it's like the cat. You get you put like you know two co- toys in front of it, and like one with a Carolina, you know, oh my God. logo on it, and one with like a yeah. You uh, Jasper would probably just break something. That's the point. Oh. Whichever one he breaks is like the winner or the loser, depending okay. on how we define it. What's the Let's famous video? Is that a the dog? Corgi, yeah, the corgi the with corgi. like a beach ball or a basketball I hate or something. That corgi. I hate what? That corgi. Whoa, 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 no, whoa, whoa. Views was... are tanking. Oh my no, God, we're losing no, subscribers. No. Stonks are down. <laughs> no, that was heartbreak. I think the corgi predicted our Tampa series game for game. And then it got to we're winning game seven. And we lost uh, one. I don't remember. Okay, that that's heartbreaking. Fair. Fuck that, that was yeah. I hate that. Corgi. <laughs> if our friend Rich is what listening or watching, yeah, we hate corgis. That's well, our I said that yeah. corgi. No, no, no. We hate all corgis. <laughs> Canada now. James, <laughs> James, you're you're part of the big bad media. <laughs> all all it, like all it takes is for somebody to say something, and you're like, "That's the worst thing ever." Yeah, and you're quoted. I like to uh, yeah, just characterize Tom people. Rosa says he hates puppies. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, wow, I can't believe you just said that, Tom. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll give you the short, short version. I, I, I Wait, I already gave it. We, we, we can win game seven. It's at home. The Canes are not automatic at home. Uh, they're definitely better at home, but they last year they came out game seven against the Rangers at home, and they laid a freaking egg. The Rangers torched them. And uh, this is a weaker Canes team. I know this Islander team is not as good as the Rangers team either, either so it kind of levels out. But um, the Islander team, as frustrating as it can be, they're a tough team to play when they when they are getting their style going and they're like like forechecking and they're making you not want to get hit constantly. So um, I'm going to give us eight. 50% chance to win the series. I know that's a little bit, it might be a little bit high, but you take it one game at a time and, and one of them's at home and you would imagine that it's going to be a raucous crowd. Um, and the way that the Canes reacted in game three was not encouraging. They did, I mean, they played really well in game four. So the key for the Islanders, stay out of the box, keep the crowd engaged, and and you got a real shot. Yeah. So wait, just and quick, don't even go close to the goalie because they'll call it interference. <laughs> quick clarification though. So are you saying fifty percent chance of winning the series overall? So yeah. that would be. So you think so that's pretty. That's pretty optimistic. I think. Yeah. And, I and like not unrealistic, just opti- optimistic. I, I like our chances in Game Six. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Even though I made the case for Game Seven, like the Canes having choked it last year, um, this Islander team, like I said, not as good as last year's Rangers team. So, uh, yeah, it'll, okay. it'll be it'll be interesting. Nice. Um, I'll go forty percent, which I am optimistic too. I just see a lot of variables that could hurt us. One of them, a, a fear I have, is that the energy of the crowd is gonna let the fourth line go a little crazy, which I, I'm worried about. But 
you know, they always say we're a veteran team, so hopefully Anders Lee and co can keep them in check. Uh, also, like, just the fact that we're playing two games and, like, the odds of having Wes McCauley in two games are pretty high, that scares me a little bit. But we do have a good home crowd. I think we could get game six done. Game seven, I feel like, we do have a chance of winning, but I'm not expecting like a game seven versus Philly where we dominate them. I think this is yeah. going to be another stolen game, just like five. But yeah, I think I, 40% I would be pretty surprised is pretty. If we yeah. Yeah. I think 40% is pretty optimistic considering there are two games. Um, we'll see how it plays out. Yep. Cool. All right. I think that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, no, I don't you know if there's about the other very, the I think very quickly. I'm gonna go through mine. Well, actually, so, I mean, have we'll, you we'll, updated we'll, it? I have your tweet up from a couple days ago. Yeah, we'll we'll go through it together. So it's the same, or did you update it? No, no, no I I you can't update it. <laughs> I've been updating it after every game. Oh, Islanders <laughs> in seven. Um, all right. Well, I think I did pick the Islanders in seven. So yes, you did. If the Islanders win the series. I'll be completely right. Yeah. And you have the Islanders Rangers playing after that, but okay. Yeah, I Sorry. don't have that going too well for us, but. Um, <laughs> Boston, Florida, as you heard on this podcast, uh, Florida still living. They won. They got outshot by 20, but they they scored four goals. Um, Florida already, this is a win. Like, you look good. You pushed the best team ever to six, uh, and you're you're coming home uh, for game six. You won game five. You did the same thing the Islanders did. Um, so very – and more impressive because they did it against a better opponent. So – very imp- uh, impressed by Florida's fortitude and by their ability to have Matthew Goodjob, uh, who's been awesome. Um, Toronto, very impressed. Um, I-, I-, I figured they were going to respond in game two after the egg they laid in game one. And I think how badly Toronto played in game one was the best thing that could possibly happen. You know, like you can't play worse than that. And I think they they had to have been like, wow, we can't play worse than this. So let's go out in game two. And uh, if we lose, our fans might kill us on the ice. Um, because it was so bad in game one that fans were leaving a game. They probably played hundred, paid hundreds and hundreds of dollars to go to. Uh, and the, the, the Leafs went down to Tampa and won both games. One of them in just like impressive, impressive comeback fashion, down three goals. Um, this Tampa team, um, man, they've played a lot of hockey. They look a little bit tired. Uh, Vassy is not stealing everything for them. I think it's done. And it's bold to say that because Toronto has blown a three, one lead within the last two years. But this, uh, I picked Toronto in six. I think I picked them and, uh, it's looking decent for that. Um, next up. Carolina and the Islanders. I picked the Islanders in seven. Um, so I've still got a shot at that. Um, I picked the Rangers over the Devils in seven. Uh, the way that series is going, could be. Um, and if the road team wins every game, then th- wait. Wait, the is the next, game, the next game is back. Okay, if the road team wins every game, then the Rangers win in seven. Yes. yes. So that could work. Um <laughs> In the West, uh, I I went out on a limb and I picked Winnipeg over Vegas, and it's not going well. But I do stand by the fact that Winnipeg has been very much in that series the whole way. Um, ah, the cat just scratched me. He was trying uh-huh. to hit something else, and he scratched my leg. Um, Edmonton, I had over L.A. That series has been bonkers. It's been on all the drugs. Um Leon Dry said a legacy series. My God, yeah. he's good. Um, Colorado Seattle has been a way better series than I thought it would. I thought Colorado could score a billion goals uh, because I do not trust the Seattle goaltending. Seattle has just played really well, and uh, their skaters have been impressive. And Jordan Everly got an overtime goal. Good for him. Uh, Seattle, man, if Seattle gets any goaltending in the near future, they could be a real problem. Um, Dallas, Minnesota, 
So I picked Minnesota to go to the cup because I was like, you know what? Everybody's picking the Avs. Everybody's picking the Oilers. Um, in the East, everybody's picking the Bruins. And I followed with the Bruins in the East. I was like, hey, I got to mix it up in the West. It's not going to be so simple. Um, and I picked Minnesota, and I'm a moron. I don't know what else to say. Um, if you believe in Minnesota, you're stupid, and I'm stupid for doing that. Um, all they – like, it seems they're – they're a lot in life to quote C3PO. Their 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 existence is to lose in the first round. That is their existence. Mm. I, we I know that because it's been me. Yeah. I know there's their existence was to lose in the first round for a time. Um who else? The uh, the Leafs, their existence almost exclusively in the last in my life has been losing in the first round. Um so I'm very much regretting picking Minnesota. <laughs> that series is only three two. So like from from, uh, but I, I just they they win game one on the road, and instead of being like, hey, let's let's win both road games and have a chance to win the series at home, uh, they decided to bench their goalie who played amazing. Um, and at first I was like, oh, we must be hurt. And they're like, no, we're just going with a two goalie system. Well, when your other goalie is Mar- Mark Andre Fleury as like a 39 year old, um, you're stupid and you deserve to lose that series for that decision alone. Um, I, I, I did, you know, I had somebody argue to me, well, you know, you keep your, your best goalie fresh and you don't care if you lose game two. I do. I would very much like to go up 2-0 going home. If you win game one, you can go for the throat by winning game two on the road. I mean, or you could be the Rangers and give it right back. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, God, they're stupid. And I'm stupid. But, but you I'm never know. I'm trusting them. No, no, you never know. Like They probably weren't going to say anything was wrong with him. Like if it was something. Well, they did. Violent. They they've started him every game since, so he has to be okay. Like, it's just what a strange, strange decision. Uh, yeah. And I don't feel like it's getting talked about much because nobody talks about the Wild either. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't understand that. Stop scratching me. All right. On that note, uh, anything else before we? Uh, no, wrap up? you guys. You guys tell me what. What do you think of your? What do you think of the series? I'm sorry. The the cat is distracting me. All right, we'll just get out of run. here. <laughs> Nobody wants we'll, you here. We will just speed run the first round. I had Boston in five. Oh well, that's wrong. I think they're gonna destroy Florida in game six. Uh I had Tampa in seven and Tampa doesn't look good, but until the Leafs get out of the first round, not trusting them. I still think Tampa's winning in seven. I had the Islanders in six, another wrong prediction, but you never know. They might win in seven. Yeah, uh, also, we could lobby the league to change the, the call yeah. on Scott Mayfield to be an actual penalty. And they there just give us that win. Right. And then the last one in the East is Rangers in six over the Devil. Both teams are showing their complete frauds, I think. So <laughs> I actually think, even though Carolina's not good, uh, they're going to struggle in round two, which I did not think I'd say before the playoff. And then in the West, I had Colorado in six, which, you know, I think if they win tonight, they're going to take six in Seattle, but it's still scoreless, so you never know. Uh, Minnesota in seven, and even though it's a 3-2 series, I give Minnesota like 1% of winning that series. I have no faith in them anymore. Quite sad. Add Vegas in six, and one win away, possible. And Edmonton in six, which they just need one more. So I think overall, I'm feeling pretty good about the teams I picked, just maybe not the amount of games. Yeah. Well, that's better than me, who picked the Wild to go to the Cup. Yeah. I am, you know, it, I should be too, because, like, I wanted to this year, like, legitimately – like not be afraid to be out there with my, my picks because I think the playoffs tend to show you that the favorites don't always win. But um, you know what? This year, even though every series is still going and I'm impressed that, you know, 
I think even the underdogs have shown to like, nobody's been embarrassed at all. Um, and I think that's really impressive and it shows the parody is really good. Um, but, uh, yeah, maybe I maybe I should have been a little bit more illogical in the West. I think I saw how <laughs> open it was, and I was like, "Let's go, Minnesota miracle run!" Uh, and no, they're a waste. They're they're a waste. So <laughs> uh, never pick the Wild. Um, you know, I I I like have picked Toronto like five years in a row, <laughs> and I've been wrong like every year, and I might finally get rewarded. But uh, Minnesota, I'm never gonna pick them again. They've become that team in March Madness that you always pick and they always lose. And you're just like, I'm done. I don't care if you're playing a 16 seed. I'm picking them to beat you. So I'm going to be like that with Minnesota for now on. Cause they're uh, a waste. I've been right, I'm now, really hard on them. Now that we have alienated team. every yeah. single viewer, you know, there all, goes the Minnesota market. All like one or two. Brock Nelson's pissed. Uh, right, yeah. so and Anders Lee. And Anders Lee from Adina. I only Have know these seen... because yeah, go ahead, go ahead. former Islander Nick Letty also from Minnesota. Uh, yeah. I think that's good. I think that's all the Minnesota guys. Uh, really? well, I, I want to wrap up with a tweet I saw. A fun little story was that uh, apparently Kyle Palmieri won some contest when he was in high school, like oh, New Jersey Player of the Year, and. Mm -hmm. His reward for that was he got to meet a Devils player who was Zach Parisi. And no now way. They no are way. together. So that's insane. I felt, yeah, I, I felt that'd be pretty fun to share to end things off. That is insane. Wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Zach Parisi is, I think, 38 or 39. And yeah, Kyle Palmieri, who is right behind him in points for the season. They're right next to each other. So Zach Parisi is 38. Palmer's oh, 32. Okay. So possible. I mean, not possible. It did happen, but like the <laughs> logistics check out. Yeah. That's crazy. That's very yeah, cool. Especially, you know, I guess guys could come in when they're 18, 20, you know. So yeah. definitely possible. So, so there you go. Palmer's <laughs> first season for the Devils was 2015 16. Parise's last season for the Devils. For the Devils was 2008-2009. So, yeah. so, wait a second. Hang on. Well, uh, if Kyle, that means Paul Kyle Murray, Murray graduated high school in 2008. This does check out. Yeah. Wow. Well, because wow. I was going to say, Paul Murray, like, was drafted by the Ducks and played for the Ducks first. In 2010. Yeah. yeah. So, 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 like, the next year. Wow. Well, Murray, what do you know? Well, that was a fun story to end on. I'm yeah. going to yell it. I'm going to yell at the cats for <laughs> mm, um, okay. one of them is now sitting on my foot. You know, it'd be crazy if one of us gets drafted into the NHL now, exactly. you know, that would be crazy. We, we've been over yeah. this. I've already hit the point where it's exact <laughs> low nine or sorry, exact, exact uh, top nine potential. No exact bottom six. I yeah, crossed the boss <laughs> except I I suck. Mm. All right. <laughs> <Lou that>. <laughs> no. Do not bite my charger. This cat is this cat suicide. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think you are? The Islanders power play? Oh. Oh, oh got him. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go to bed. All right. I'm going to stay up for an hour or two and edit this video. <laughs> okay, I lied. I'm probably going to play a little bit of I don't know, Halo. All right. Well, I don't it's know why we can stop recording. Fortnite? Bye, everybody. Yeah. Okay, everybody bye. wave with your left hand. Wait, let Lab me let me hand. pick up the cat. Let me pick up the cat um, for one more. Learning it as usual. Oh my god. Oh my god, Tom. Okay. And left hand. Left. left hand. Left paw. Oh, he oh. <laughs> Oh, kiss, 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 kiss. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Goodbye, everybody.